what we have to, okay, let's see. Um, what we have uh, primarily to listen to tonight are a couple of the debt exclusion. Um, these are items, um, I think that uh, one is the fire, I don't see the chief here, but one is the, uh, the fire truck, which you know we put on in the fall and you all approved at that time, but it did not pass, it did pass at town meeting and it did not pass at the ballot box. So and the need is still there. There, uh, some parts of the price will be going up. I know that he's making another adjust and taking out uh, one of the, uh, the repairs to the smaller truck. So um, he can explain that to you. And I think we're still looking about $2 million, which would be borrowing beginning the year after we make the purchase, which will probably be three years from now. Uh, the, the, a new one then is Article 17, the water tanks. And I know Scott's on tonight to explain that one. I really can't say what this cost is going to be. He has put in $9 million, but it, it needs to come before select board uh, or you all can give some advice on this. Um, I suppose you can certainly weigh in as to whether this is going to be exclusively paid out of water fees, um, whether we're going to have a portion of it uh, any or all of it out of a debt exclusion override. So that will make a difference um, as to where the funding comes from. So that would be the source of the water tanks. There are other items on here which would come directly out of water reserves. And I know, again, Scott will go over that. Um, that will be 18 and 20 um, for those are the capital items um, that would be coming out of water reserves directly. And we do have the funds in water reserves. We're going into town meeting with over a million dollars in water reserves certified. Uh, some of that will be spent on the budget. Let's see. Yeah, about 125,000 of that will be spent on the budget. And um, 150,000 of it is one of the earlier articles, which is our annual contribution to the um, water treatment fil uh, filtration member uh, membrane reserve fund, which accumulates uh, for multiple years before it is then spent. And then there are these uh, two items that will come out for Article 18 and Article 20, the, leaving a balance of still over 400,000 in the water reserves. So that's really about it um, on what I can say about funding. And I think you can go oh. on and listen to what's on the agenda. All right, hey, Linda, back to these water tanks. Um, I don't even know if anyone's had a Scott or you had a chance. If this were to all come out of the uh, water enterprise, then uh, what would be, what kind of an impact would that have on our water rates? I haven't, I haven't gone that far with it, Paul. I mean, the payments would be the same. I mean, we're going to borrow and make payments. I know the total payments would be the same no matter what the source is. I don't know what the impact would be. And that's something um, I know that we have the present. Uh, we try and do our first round, as is your first meeting, to, to get a description of the projects and then have the next meeting um, that we can get together. Hopefully, um, by then, we'll have some, maybe we'll get some more input from select board about how we would finance this. Um, we could have a better, um, I'll work with Dan Zadonik and we will see what we can do as saying how much of this would, how it would impact taxes and how it would impact water. water right. or, or if it's a combo, what it would do to it either one. Combo. Yeah, right, right. And uh, I assume would you try to get a USDA loan for this? Uh, I think that Scott is prepared to talk about that. Oh, okay. Well, why don't we uh, go right into it then. Scott, you have the floor, and why don't you uh, start out with the article about the water tanks? Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, so the water tanks, it, it would be, we would be potentially looking for a USDA loan. Uh, the article we're, we're looking for is $9 million, but there is some grant opportunity through the USDA on that and how much that is, uh, they don't tell you until uh, you, you have the commitment in hand. 
if the people of Hadley vote and give us the $9 million and we move forward with the project and we apply to the USDA, then they will respond back to us saying that, you know, we'll give you 20, 30% uh, forgiveness or whatever. They just don't make any commitments until, uh, you know, you have potentially all the funding in hand and you're, and you approach them, then they, you know, tell you what they're going to give you on the other side. Okay, and when would this project start, or when would it be completed also? Well, we're still in the planning stage a little bit with that, but we'd be potentially looking to possibly get going, you know, next spring. But, and this is a timing thing too, we have to do the project uh, early in the spring or in the fall when our water use is at its lowest. Uh, because mm -hmm. we'll be without, you know, one water tank at a time. So it, it, there's definitely a timing thing involved with this. And so are we getting all our water out of, uh, it's coming from Lawrence Plain, right? Or Mount Holyoke? Uh, well, there's the water tank up on Mount Holyoke, and then there's one on uh, Mount Warner Road. And more, this is curiosity, do we get water out of Mount Warner now? Because I thought we weren't using that anymore. The, the tank we do, but not the wells. But not the wells? Okay. May I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Yes, you may. Um, Scott, I don't know if you can answer this, but do we have to pass this at town meeting and assuming we're going to have an override to pay for it, does that have to pass as well? Or can we just get by with it at town meeting and then they'll they'll help us figure out how much they're going to uh, uh, give us for funding? Uh, I mean, Scott, I don't, I don't recall them saying that, Carolyn, if, if we needed uh, just a town meeting full Linda, or not, Linda's, I remember. Linda's prepared. Linda's Is coming. it? If it was going to be completely paid out of water, we would not need to go to uh, pass, uh, the town meeting would, would be the final stop. But if it's going to be uh, partially out of general funds and, um, and that would mean what we need to get a debt exclusion override because we don't have that kind of money available. And so it would be, um, we, so that would have to go to a, to a ballot after town meeting for approval. We're sort of, um, and, and, and I think I've got this right, Scott. We're, we're sort of, uh, we're at a point where all the pieces kind of have to come together at the same time. Did we have a figure of 9 million? Is that still accurate? Is that yes, what you mean? So, yes. Okay. So some may or may not be debt exclusion. Some may or may not be water reserves we don't know what portion of each and then we don't know out of the nine million how much we are really going to be responsible for or what they are the, what we're going to have loan forgiveness for which would mean that we wouldn't need to pay it so let's say we got 30 percent grant or loan forgiveness so to two 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 million seven hundred thousand back, but we would still have to have authorized the full amount. Is that right? We still have to authorize nine million no matter what, even if we end up borrowing six million to complete the project because of the loan forgiveness that we get. And then out of that six million, is that going to be 50-50 between the two, or is it going to be water? Mm -hmm. going to be the so definitely need it's it's hard to know what to answer when we don't have, I mean, it's all going to have to come together at the same time. We don't really have a first step to take here. Well, I, I, you've, you've answered my question. I, I'm, I'm pretty certain we will need an override. And so we, we, we just have to count on funding the whole thing, however that works and then get back what we get back. Okay. Thank you. Linda, would you be, uh, since this is water, would this be looking at like a 40 year loan? I don't think we'd want to do, uh, I, I think we would probably do 30 year. Um, it'd be an awful lot more interest to go into 40 years. 
Uh, we used to have the policy that we didn't do anything more than 20 years, but when we were doing the three buildings at once, we weren't able to hold to that. Considering that we're also thinking of, um, that we also have a few other projects on the, on the horizon, um, including a DPW building potentially, and uh, perhaps something with the levy. Um, I, I, I think extending it out uh, I, I don't I I would rather see it shorter but if we if we have all those I, I don't know Paul I guess we'll have to consult with people yeah. like you time comes well, well you're right you know if we go longer our payments per year will be less but we're going to end up paying more in the long run with all the interest that's accruing so it's Scott it, that kind of leads me to another question to you Scott what kind of lifespan do you typically see on water tanks such as mm. these well it depends on the particular type of water tank. So like the ones we're looking at, you know, I I, I forgot exactly, but I'm going to go on the limb and say they're, you know, uh, 60 year or so, you know, if they're properly maintained, you'll probably get more than that out of it. it it's all a maintenance thing. It, if it's properly maintained and taken care of and et cetera, it, could last a long, you know a very long time and are they both so they're both going at the same time or is, yes so I'm understanding uh, you correctly yeah so uh every three years the state comes out and looks at the water system whatever and the last time they came out they you know look closely at the water tanks and you know they're starting to meet their life expectancy for a bare steel water tank so they put that on our radar and uh so uh we had a company come in they you know dove in the tanks and did inspection etc and there's a laundry list of things that uh needs to be repaired and doing so to, to uh bring them up to you know complete you know of today's standard or whatever paint them do some other work and stuff the estimate was about $3 million. Uh, and, and eventually you're going to have to replace them anyway, because they're bare steel. Just, they just let only last so long. Uh, there's really, they ultrasound them a little bit and try to uh, see, you know, like how the metal is, if there's any fatigue, et cetera, but they can only do so much. Uh, so it's one of those things. It's going to be a pay now or pay later. And this is, you know, through put on us uh, from the state. This isn't kind of our request. It's it's more of a you know we have to meet their standards with this. So if you know you throw three million dollars at it now to paint them and get them up to snuff, well, in whatever 10, 15 years they could come back and say, oh, that's it. The clock's up. You got to put new water tanks. Well, in how many? How much is it going to be down the road? the price of things goes up every day. So it's just, we thought it was better spent in the select board agreed that we replace, look at replacing the water tanks instead of throwing, you know, $3 million at, you know, paint and in rehab. It's only going to last so long. Yeah, that, that makes sense in the long run. Right. Yeah. Uh, Linda, I had a question for you too. Maybe it'll help them out. Uh, I know we talked about this. Isn't the Callahan coming off soon? It's it's almost paid for. The treatment plant within within five years. I can pull within up the five years. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I know they asked you how soon. So if you were talking about this as soon as next spring, and, and is that even a possibility, Scott? That you would be doing the project then on uh, next spring. Yes, that's a very good possibility or, okay. or into the fall. Okay, so if you do it next spring, that's fiscal 25, we're borrowing, we, we would borrow by that September and we would be paying it off. The first payment would be an FY27. And so, how, long, how long does this take, Scott, to, to complete it? Because all the engineering's done or is this? Well, they're, they're pretty much, it's pretty much done. Uh, the timeline, it, it depend depending on how everything goes, weather conditions, whatever, they're telling us they could have 
you know, the tank up back up and running within a couple of months per tank. Really? Wow. The, the tank is built off site and then it's brought here in pieces and then assemb assembled on the ground. So that speeds up the process. Hmm. All right. Anyone else have any questions or comments? It's so, uh, could I answer uh, Scott's question? Uh, Callahan Wells, our last payment for that will be uh, 27, and which is about the year I think that I said would be the first payment. So, uh, what's coming off them for Callahan Wells is we're currently paying 164,000 out of. Um, Ooh, out, out of general fund on that one. I think we're paying the same amount of, out of water. So it would be coming off both sources. Um, so if we take $9 million, that looks like we would be looking at 300,000 of principal a year over 30 years if we paid for the full amount. So actually what would be going on would be less than what's coming off. No, yes, yes. With the interest standard? Roughly. No, I haven't done the interest yet. But um, so, yes, we have 100, about 165, 330,000 a year. 300, yeah, it would be higher with interest. Yes. So we would be, uh, it would be not a complete um, amount. Yeah, it would be nice, you know, if. Yeah. Um, It'd probably be an extra, ooh, I don't know, what do you think the first? Uh, a year's worth of interest. The first worth. year, I'm at nine million dollars, Paul. Oh. At least three hundred, right? That's, that's so yeah, we, we would we would have we would have more, uh, obviously. Yep. Coming on. Especially with these yeah, higher rates now, yeah. three or four hundred thousand. Yeah. Of interest, the first year, wow. Yep, nine million. Like All right. But then again, we're looking at I'll have it. You know, we're not I'll subtracting the grants out though, too, the potential. That's exactly grants. right. That's a, that's exactly right. I haven't. Uh, that would be between a half of that would be in the. Uh, I don't know. What, this is not my call. This would be select board. So we probably should get a decision on that before you make a final decision. But um, half between general and water, and yes, if we only end up having to borrow. 60% of that, Paul, we would be back, back down under. So well, I think that, I, that's a really good, um, that's a really good combination of questions. And we should uh, try and get that nailed before town meeting, obviously, and say how much is coming off and how much would be going on with our best estimates. And we're okay. at some point, we're just going to have to make some guess um, as to what Scott hears is uh, a good probability of what percentage um, we would get back. There's so many moving parts here that we just don't yeah. have answers to right now. And Randy, uh, is the board going to be talking about this pretty soon as far as allocations are concerned? And well, I don't, we haven't talked about it, but I'm assuming that the town administrator is listening and will uh, probably put it on an agenda coming up very soon. Excellent. Anyone else? Okay, Scott, why don't we move on to the uh, drinking water asset management plan? Okay, uh, so we're looking to do a, a drinking water asset management plan. Uh, we're currently doing the same thing in the sewer department right now. So it's basically a study of the drinking water system and it helps us prioritize, uh, you know, potential problems and it gives cost estimates and it help it helps you like try to get any grants, et cetera. So this is another one of those that's uh they're they're funny how these grants are done. So on on paper or you need a hundred and fifty five thousand dollars uh for the grant uh that it's a reimbursement process, but it's really going to only cost us $31,000 of actual cash. So we have to have 155,000 available, but the 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 real cost of it's $31,000. Okay. 
And this is a guaranteed reimbursement? Yes. Okay, thank you. And what's the deal on the $31,000 of in-kind services provided by the town? Uh, so that's that's uh, all the staff of the town, uh, myself, my department, you know, Carol and Linda, et cetera, that any work that you do, your hours, et cetera, are, there's a cash value on that, oh, oh, which yeah. they uh, yeah. take, take that off the uh, amount. Like cost allocations. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thanks. That explains that. And I guess my other last question, I think it is like, what very specifically, like, what is this? You know, I'm a little puzzled by this whole thing. So th th they'll look at the drinking water system in a whole, uh, you know, obviously not the water tanks. We already know we have problems with that, but our pipeline, the Callahan well, you know, a little bit at Mount Warner and they look at it and they try to, uh, you know, point out our problems and things that we should address. And they give us a prioritization of that, you know, starting with the most critical thing that, you know, potentially could fail at the top of the list. And then, you know, as you go down, you know, less important things. And along with that, they give cost estimates of, you know, what this potential project will cost, uh, you know, et cetera. So everything is kind of laid out for us. So we know what we should be looking at. And part of the study too, they look at the water rates and, you know, try to, you know, make a recommendation to the town if your water rates are too low and like suggest, you know, a, a strategic rate increase over so many years to, to potentially support funding of these projects. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for that additional information. Anyone else? Christine, Bill? This will come out of water reserves. Are we making a recommendation on these tonight or are we gonna meet again before uh, town meeting? Well, I was thinking, you know, I don't know about the rest of the committee, but maybe uh, this one on East Street, we could actually decide tonight. And I, I'm not so sure about the water tanks yet because there's so many moving parts and they're all right. up in the air right now. And we need a lot more information, David, before yes. we can really go one way or the other. Uh, how, yeah, about the, how about everyone else? What are the rest do you think? On the on the water tanks, Paul. Yes. Yeah, I think we need to understand the uh, funding sources so that we can um, decide how we're going to move forward with that. But I, I I'm pretty. I mean, we've the select board has heard this uh, pitch before from Scott, so we're aware of what's going on, and it's something that we truly believe needs to happen. So, however it happens, we can decide that. But I think at the end of the day. It, it needs to happen where the, wherever the funding comes from. Right. Just like what kind of allocation are you looking at then? Correct. Yeah, right. When we don't know the answer to that yet. And then maybe Linda can talk to Dan and see if it were whatever, a 50, 50 or whatever, what kind of impact that would have both ways, you know, number one on the water rates and number two on the tax rate. And then we got the wild card, which is the grant. And like you said, Scott, we don't even know what that's going to be until we, get a little further into the woods, right? Yeah, you, you don't you don't know what that is until you sign in the dotted line that you're committing you and you have the nine million in your hand to pay. And mm -hmm. then they, you know, then they tell you, you know, what their forgiveness is gonna be. So Scott, yeah. there so this is not like the library that cost us seven million and we got a three and a half million dollar grant. So we only had to borrow three and a half million. You're, you're saying that we're going to ask somewhere or another borrow the entire $9 million and then they help us pay the loan? Is that no, what it looks? No. So, Linda, it's kind of like that the ones, those all those other ones that we worked on together where you you have to show that you have all that funds, that funding. You don't so just necessarily. Authorization. Okay. Yeah, we just authorization. Right. Okay. Right. And then 
how much real money you need is to okay. be determined. So we have to be ready to borrow nine million, have all the authorization for us. And they say, we'll give you three back. And we say, great. Then we only have to borrow $6 million. Is that correct? Right? Oh. Correct. Okay, we'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> great, so for all those reasons above, I'm thinking we, we should really hold off on that article until we get more information, have a second meeting for that. And, and to answer your question more directly, David, we could probably vote on the other two tonight if that's what the rest of the committee wants to do. But first we got to hear Scott talk a little bit more about the E Street uh, deal too, the culverts. Okay, do you want to, uh, Paul, do you want to stick with the water plant while we're on the water subject? Because we have article five, still the water filter plant membrane, 150,000. Oh, yes, why don't we? Uh... Why don't we do that? Thank yeah, you, so, Scott. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so I'm asking for $150,000. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been doing this uh, every year uh, in about every 10 year cycle, depending on, you know, how much water we really pump. The fil water filter membranes need to be, repl be replaced. And uh, every year we get our new estimate, of course, the amount goes up. So it's, it's pushing the... Seven hundred fifty thousand dollar mark now. So uh, we currently uh, adjusted this number a little higher. So when uh, we have that pot of money available, when this project needs to be done, and we've done this for the last uh, few years. Yeah, this this has a familiar ring to it. It should. That's right. And this doesn't affect taxes at all. It's out of water reserves. It's out of the stabilization, right. Yeah. Okay. Any comments or other questions about Article 5? Okay. Well, why don't we jump to East Street now then? Okay. Uh, so on East Street in the vicinity of 136, uh, there's a, a ditch that runs through there and uh, some culverts and things of that nature. Uh, so last fall, I applied for a grant, an MVP grant, and I, I got the grant. Uh, we were awarded the grant, and they started uh, the preliminary work, uh, the design and, you know, engineering for the project. Uh, we used, I used the funds out of my budget to uh, pay our cash match on that. So, now uh, we're looking for, you know, moving forward to the next step, which is construction of uh, a new uh, new head walls and a new drainage culvert there and some work on the ditches and et cetera. Uh, so we're applying for the MVP grant again, but potentially uh, we're gonna need some money. So we're, the cost estimate is a is a, a million dollars to do this project, and the grant program has a twenty five percent match. So we would be looking for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, two fifty. Yes. Okay. And is this a situation where if we come up with the money, and then we don't get the grant, it it goes away. We don't we don't move forward with the project correct and, and where's the funding source for this that or also would be water reserves also okay no yeah. this, this this is uh this is a taxation one linda oh you know what i didn't realize that okay i see water culverts and i thought it was a water one okay yeah. um and it's got contingent uh, upon an override. Uh, that's tough to say for two hundred fifty thousand, and we don't have that much uh, available free cash right now. Um, what's what's the timing on this, Scott? This has to be this meeting and not the fall. Yeah, we uh, the the grant opportunity uh, you apply over the summer, so we have to be somewhat ready to go. 
Scott, you were, I think you were saying in finance though, that if, uh, pretty much if it gets to this point, you know, the grant is pretty much a sure thing. Well, when we, yes, when we originally, uh, started this project, uh, you know, the people we I'm working with from the state, uh, said, said that, you know, they, they usually don't give engineering money out, you know, without completing the project down the road. They, they look at the project, you know, full circle, but uh, obviously the first thing is design, engineering, et cetera, and, you know, get some information back of, you know, how good the project really is. And this project, uh, it's, it's a good project, uh, for the MVP, you know, uh, so with that being said, I would be assuming that we would get construction uh, phase money. And how far reaching in terms of the ditch will this go? Will it will it stop at East Street or will it continue on towards Middle Street and clear, cleaning up, you know, from East Street down to the to Bay Road or, or so so the whole scope of the project, Randy, is from the origin of the water source, which is, which is um, you know, Pine Hill, Nashua, up there on Route 9, yeah. uh, to the outfall on Middle Street, you know, right before the DPW. So it's that whole entire ditch line. Okay, awesome, thank you. And when would the, is the grant received prior to or after completion? Uh, usually there's, uh, as the grant goes on, you have to make payments like, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, the grant, they send you, uh, you know, they request payment. Okay. So you get, as you make progress payments, they reimburse you. Yes. You yep. submit claims and then they, right. Okay. But is yeah. that for the whole the whole amount or just the town's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we have to put up? Well, we get we get a reimbursement for the whole entire project, but just our portion of that's two fifty. We don't make any payments, any kind of vendors till we get our reimbursements back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they come in. When we submit, they their turnaround on us pretty fast. I'm working with Linda on one right now, and you know it, it turns around pretty fast. This is, I don't know, like the new norm for them, the way that they operate. And so, when every time you put in a uh, request for a reimbursement, is it prorated the twenty five seventy five each time, or are we paying our share at the very beginning or at the very end? Uh, usually, I, I've been paying our when I started this project I paid our percentage midstream when they were did a task that you know I was responsible for I, I paid then really so in the beginning they're paying 100% of a bill and then you pay in the middle and then they pay again at the end if well, I it's, like I said, it depends how the tasks come in. So the engineering grant, our responsibility was $15,000. So as the, as the task came in, when they sent one for $15,000 that we were obligated to pay, that's when I chose to pay that particular step. Okay. Like a project like this, time wise, it's not really in today's like construction scopes. It's it's not, you know, probably if the weather was right, you know, two, three months worth of work, the project will be done. It's not it's not like it's a multi year project. So everything's gonna happen relatively fast. All right. That's good news. And again, that's all from taxation, not water reserves. It's yeah, it's it's a drain. It's basically a drainage prop 
project. It's something yeah, to do with, yeah, uh, true. you know, drinking water. True. Okay, so, so that, it would need to come from the general fund. Uh, ideally, if there was free cash, uh, it will come, we would have this come out of free cash at the Springtown meeting. We don't have that amount of free cash given what's been allocated to a budget. Um, I will work with finance committee. There's a couple of possibilities. One is to see if there's something in the budget that can wait till fall and uh, vote this and then take care of the rest of uh, a budget item uh, in the fall. The other is that we could uh, we could vote to uh, borrow it, do short term borrowing. I'm not. Um, that's really going to cut into what you're able to approve uh, at the Capitol um, for, for capital items for the fall town meeting. So I'm not really crazy about doing the other. And the, and the third possibility, again, is talking with finance committee or seeing how they feel about using, um, using, um, stabilization as this is a capital project. If that's something that they would want to float the, um, at least have the authorization come out of stabilization until at least we know whether we've got the grant. And then, um, perhaps do something different in, in the fall town meeting. So we've got a few pieces to juggle here. And uh, Linda, then it sounds like what you're saying is a debt exclusions off the table for this one. Well, we don't usually do them for this small an amount. I mean, it's, we can do it, but that also means uh, putting it out for a ballot, uh, you know, a few weeks after it. And the only people are really going to understand um, this being for a grant is a little complicated to explain. It's not like having people go vote on, vote on a fire truck, you know, or, or some real project. This is a 250,000 one quarter of a culvert on a grant that we might not uh, get. Um, it just, I, I don't like to see this kind on a debt exclusion. Um, that's certainly something that finance committee could, could decide. However, mm -hmm. we have to definitely get these David before the, David felt this has to come before finance committee. And there's not enough of debt uh, freed up capacity to pay for this within the levy limit, correct? There may be, but that's uh, that is really going to cut into your ability to approve other capital requests that are going to come before you in the fall because the fall. we have to wait till the fall. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, I, I think we're going to have to look at, you know, unfortunately triaging some of those other capital requests because to lose out on, you know, $750,000 grant to take care of a project, I think is a big, big mistake to, you know, <laughs> sometimes things need to be delayed to get, to get free mm -hmm. money. And, and I think not delaying it and giving away this free money is going to be a big mistake. So I would agree with that hundred percent. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, they're giving us three dollars for every one dollar that we spend. I mean, it's it's hard to walk away from that. Yeah. So you're suggesting to short-term borrowing over postponing to fall. It's, no, well, I'm, I, I'd say I'm saying if you know, however, we need to make it happen to have it happen at this town meeting without going to a debt exclusion. I think we need to to do. Uh, I agree. And, I agree. And, the debt exclusion is out. Yeah, and I agree with you. That exclusion, no, nobody reading this at the ballot box is going to really understand the full picture, and they're just going to see, ah, that doesn't make sense. The ditch doesn't affect me. I'm voting no. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So I think what David was saying is if, if we need to uh, jettison some other items from the the town meeting warrant to, to pay for this, is that correct, David? Well, for fall town meeting, uh, yeah. I, I think is the bigger issue. So some of the things that were going to be capital requests to the fall, maybe we have to push off six months or a year, yeah. um, you know, and see how our free cash comes into play. On a temporary basis. Right. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Okay, how does the committee feel about voting on the uh, drinking water assessment plan, East Street and the membranes? 
filtration membranes at tonight's meeting. I'll I'll make a recommendation that uh, to approve those three articles. I'll second that. Okay, a motion has been made and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, hey, uh, Polly, you just got a roll call. call it. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and that's you, right. Yeah. And when you say these three, David, you're talking about 17, 18, and 20? 17, water 18, tanks. 21. You're talking about the water 20. tanks, too, though? What's the no, third one? No, no, water tanks are deferred. Five, so what are yeah. 20. Five and 20. Five. Got it. Okay. Five, eighteen, and 20. Okay, Christine Pipchinski. Yes. Bill Bannock. Yes. David Phil. Yes. And I think myself, I'll vote yes. You should include me, Paul. And Randy, I'm looking. Somebody, you're front and center. <laughs> yes. Randy Iser. Yes. We save the best for the last. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, I think we are pretty much at a stopping point here. We should probably consider setting up a, a follow-up meeting tonight for the water tanks. And by then, maybe Linda and Scott and Carolyn can all bring us additional information to help guide us. So the, the select board meets again on the 20th, correct? Carolyn? Yes. Yeah. So I, I guess we need a, an item on the agenda to discuss the funding for that water tanks article. And, and Carolyn, what would be the absolute latest you'd need us to make a decision by? So I, I do think you need to certainly need another meeting. Um, I, I think we're doing okay. But I, I think there's a lot to look at. And there's I just feel like there's some more um, behind the scenes, you know, looking at all the finances to bring you a whole package. Right. Well, how about then, would two weeks be enough of time for the three of you? Uh, can you meet next week? If we meet next week, then we won't have the select boards. No, input, I would. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I then, prefer maybe the 25th or the 26th. Oh, you know what? We're in March. We're doing okay. So what do what you, Linda, you've got a, more, a, a schedule that's got to get worked around. Why, um, why can't we bump it? Why don't we bump it as far as like April 8th or 9th? Because select board will have met twice by then, the twentieth and the third, and there and hopefully they'll be better resolved on the um, budget, and then we'll know just what free cash we're dealing with, and we'll just have some more answers. That that's not, I mean, that's a good amount of time. The, the select board will barely have uh, gotten the budget from finance by then. Isn't that plenty of time, Carolyn? If they meet on April eighth or ninth. Yeah, sorry. I'm looking at my calendar on the wall. Um, well, then how about how about the ninth? The ninth at five. Mm hmm. Fine with me. Yeah, that works. The the one thing you have to look at is if you're going to think about using a debt exclusion, is how late you can get the question to to Jessica to have it appear on the annual town election. And I think that's closing in the end of this month. Really? Or early April. Oh, I, didn't, I did not know that. All right. Well, then maybe we find out what that deadline is. And then yeah, I did not know schedule. that. Hmm. So should we back it up? Well, that's a really important date that I, I've got to get. I, I was not made aware of that, so I'll have to look. Why doesn't Carolyn find out what the date is? And to David's point, we just back work backwards from that. Yeah. yeah. 
rather than scheduling and then having to reschedule. Okay, then I'll just send an email out to all you folks like last time over a text. Yeah, that works. Just tentatively though, are you guys available on the second or the 26th? Oh, this. I'd rather, I can't do the 26th very easily. Okay, how about the second? Yes. Chris? And Bill? Randy? Yeah, I can make it work. I'll make it work. Okay. Bill? Yeah. Okay. And that's a, just tentative right now. So, um, if it's up and how about the 27th, Paul, if we have to have something by the end of the month? 27. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm available then. Okay. I'd prefer the 27th. I, okay. I, I think I am Same available. Here. Bill? I might not be. Yes. I'm not, I'm not positive. Okay, we'll put that in tentatively. And I guess the key is like what Dan brought up about the deadline for Jess. Yeah. Carolyn, you let us all know, right? I will. Thank you. Okay. Any other business anyone wants so to discuss? You had you had fire on the agenda. Um, I think Mike had a conflict, but I, I if you wanted to talk about it, I can answer any questions about the the, the fire truck. Well, we uh, we voted it last year. We voted to approve it. Yeah, just for clarification, it's a smaller number. And because it's a new warrant, I, I do think you will have to vote on it. And maybe you'll do that the next time you meet. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that it is uh, it, it is not including the refurbishing of the older truck. That's different this year. It's not included. Last year, it was part of that whole, uh, that vote. And what's the decrease, like 50,000? 150. Yeah. 150, okay. Yeah. Thanks. So you will All eventually right. have to revote that. Then why don't we put that on our agenda too? You, you want to just get rid of it now, Paul? I mean, I, I yeah, we could it's pretty actually, cut and dry. Not, nothing else has changed, right, Carolyn? No. Other than the uh, refurbishment's been removed. Yeah, I'm willing to do that if the rest of the committee wants to do it. Then why don't we uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve the fire department ladder truck in the amount of two million one hundred and fifty thousand even. Two million even. Two million. That's two million. Yeah. Two million dollars. Must be working off an old sheet. Here. You are Must working be. off an old one. The, the estimate is lower. All right. So okay. So moved, Paul. Okay. I'll we have a second. second. All right. A motion's been made and seconded. And any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Roll call. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we go again. Okay, <laughs> first, Randy Iser. Yes. Bill Bannock. Yes. Christine Pipchinski. Yes. David Phil. Yes. Paul McCretzky. Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Okay. okay. Any other business? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, there's a, at 558. And uh,